Yeah, I did it with, going to do loads of sing-alongs in a row. How do you feel about that? The sing-alongs are easy as well. They're pretty similar to the last one. This song's about, you guys like music? And you like, and you like sing-alongs? You like reggae music? Uh, do you like Choose Your Own Adventure novels? <laughs> choose Your Own Adventure novels? <laughs> you like them? Okay. I thought you didn't like them, man. Like, who doesn't like a Choose Your Own Adventure novel? These guys are kids. I'm going to combine all of them into a song. Where basically this, so the song is about music and the sing-along line, I say, I don't think I mentioned reggae yet, and you say, I fucking love it. <laughs> Sorry about making all the kids swear, by the way. Huh? They don't let children into gigs in England, so I don't have to worry about this stuff. I apologise. Um, but, uh, yeah, I say, I don't think I mentioned reggae, you say, I fucking love it. And uh, if I believe that you love reggae, I will sing you my one and only reggae song. <laughs> And if I believe that you fucking love reggae, I'd do it in a reggae voice. So you get to choose your own adventure. I used to play in a grunge band when I was 17. I had a Fender Mustang and a pair of ripped up jeans. We used to play the army and navy. We did shitloads of gigs. Got a bit of a following back in sunny old Essex. Well, it wasn't quite Seattle, but we thought that it was cool. And I had a fucking great time frying my guitar against the wall. Yeah, I liked Nirvana in 1995. It'd been about a year or so since Kurt Cobain had died. But history repeats itself and fashion turns around. And they've invented a genre called new grunge now. After new metal, new rave, and even new folk. You can pigeon out the music, but the music never stops. You got soul, jazz, ska punk, classical guitar. Hip hop, electro, drum and bass, bluegrass and avant garde. Well, there's someone there to sing along, and there's someone else to hum it. I don't think I mentioned reggae yet. I fucking love it! I was listening to the barn where I started listening to rap. I used to love Snoop Doggy Dog and the Wu Tang Clan. I think the first time I heard techno, I was into my late teens. I was at some rave in Luton on a really banging E, and I'd dance all night to the music. And then it would go home. I'd lay in bed the next day and listen to the Counting Crows. My mum raised me on the Beatles. She said Paul McCartney was God. So I learned pretty early on the importance of a song. The history repeats itself and fashion turns around. Just look at Paul McCartney now. Well, you got a rock and pop, rock and roll, rockin' a rock and billy. Detroit house and acid house, rip pop and indie. But there's someone there to sing along, and there's someone there to hum it. I don't think I mentioned reggae yet. I fucking love it! Yeah, well done. Yeah. 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 And you definitely want it in the reggae voice? Yeah. Like all good reggae songs, this song was inspired by Ali McBeal. <laughs> and uh, in Ali McBeal, they use theme tunes to get over big problems that they have in their life. And uh, this is a song about not taking cocaine for a whole weekend. <laughs> Feel free to use it yourself if you want. It's called Charlie. Now, uh, before I kick into the reggae voice, I'd like to apologise for all white people with dreadlocks. <laughs> Coming, coming from someone that had to. No Charlie, no, no, no. No Charlie, no. No Charlie, no, no, no. No Charlie, no. Well, I'm not gonna take any more Charlie. Well, I'm not gonna take. Yes. <laughs> Not once. I 
that's what I'm thinking about before I go to sleep at night. I'm just get the dreads back. <laughs> Sometimes the Charlie make you feel so good And it make you feel so bad But Charlie make you happy for a little while And then the Charlie make you feel oh so sad And I'm not gonna take any more Charlie No Charlie, no! Thanks guys! Is it, is it possible for anybody to get some kick? Look at that. How about a hundred bucks? <laughs>